Do you remember Small Soldiers, the 1998 action movie for kids about toys that got built with military-grade microchips which somehow ended up programming one set of toys to be peaceful, friendly creatures searching for their lost home, and the other set to be genocidal killers dead set on eliminating the nice monsters by any means necessary. The lesson here, don't put weapons tech into a Furby, we don't know what it could be capable of. In a lot of ways, Small Soldiers was a pretty boy the numbers 90s kid flick, but as a 7 year old, this movie spoke to me. It was toys, on the big screen, talking, and blowing each other up. That's all I was looking for as a 7 year old, literally all I wanted. Whoever did the focus testing for this movie, congrats, you nailed it. Also, doesn't Brick Bazooka kind of look like the human version of Donkey Kong a little? Am I, am I the only one who notices this? I feel like I've been overthinking this for years. So anyway, Small Soldiers was a big hit, which of course meant a video game tie-in. And for Christmas that year, I managed to snag a copy of Small Soldiers for the PS1, which up until that moment was the most hyped I had ever been for a video game. And, um, it was alright. It was fine. It was a fine game. But still, I loved Small Soldiers, so I kept playing it. I'm playing it. I'm playing it. And slowly but surely, over time, I grew to appreciate this otherwise average game quite a bit. To the point where I think it's kind of underrated as a licensed game nowadays. I mean, maybe it's just nostalgia talking, but there's heart and soul hidden within this game. And we're going to talk about it today, because I've got nothing else to do. So what is Small Soldiers for the PS1? Well, it's a third person action platformer with a heavy emphasis on shooting stuff. You play as Archer, Emissary of the Gorgonites, uh -huh. and you run around levels exploring and shooting commandos while also doing some simple platforming from time to time. Something interesting about this game is that it takes place across locations set in the Gorgonites and Commando Elite's homeworld, so instead of playing a straight adaptation of the movie, you get a unique take on the fictional backstory of the toys. Something that was talked about for maybe 3 minutes of the entire movie's runtime is the basis for this entire video game. This isn't a game about toys, this is a game about Gorgonites defending their homeworld from the invading Commando Elite and then mounting a counterattack on the Commando's war-torn homeworld to finish them off once and for all. And for a game based on a movie where Kirsten Dunst destroys Barbie dolls with a baton, that's quite a different direction for this game to go. Unfortunately, what sounds like a great setup for a game in the Small Soldiers universe kind of ends up feeling like a missed opportunity when you realise there's pretty much no story or lore explored in the game. The most story you get is 20 seconds of cutscenes and short lines of text during each level's mission briefing. Now this wouldn't be so bad if the levels that are designed to show off the Gorgonites and Commandos Elite worlds were fun to explore, but they are completely let down by some awful design choices and graphical issues. I think the first thing anybody will notice when playing this game is the draw distance. It's, it's bad. It's really bad. It's one of the worst I've ever seen, to be honest. Large parts of this game are spent staring into a black void until suddenly parts of the level pop into view in front of you. It can be jarring when first playing the game and it's pretty much prevalent throughout the entire thing. It's just something that you gotta learn to live with. And on top of that, the game goes for this incredibly muted colour palette as well. I guess what I'm trying to say really is that Small Soldiers is grey. The whole game is grey. Well, some of it is brown, but most of it is grey. You get these cool tribal temples and rooftop villages in the Gorgon homeworld, and the whole thing is grey. You get these war-torn industrial locations full of machines on the Commando homeworld, and the whole thing is grey. And sometimes brown. And you can't see more than a few metres ahead of you at a time. So this looks kind of bad, right? But here's the thing, the actual gameplay, it can be pretty fun. So alright yes, it's a third person shooter in the days before dual analogue control, but Archer's movement in this game is actually pretty good and the fixed camera centred behind the character does a really good job of keeping Archer in focus at all times, making the movement and platforming pretty enjoyable for the most part. The combat here is also kind of fun, it's very simple, you're basically just strafing around enemies while shooting them and dodging enemy fire until they die. You've got a few different ammo types available like homing and rocket shots, sub weapons like mines and grenades, and you can even summon Gorgonite allies to fight alongside you. There's not a huge amount of variety between the weapon and enemy types, but there is enough here to keep you engaged throughout the game's 14 levels, and I can even forgive the game's regular turret sections, because it lets you pilot a mech later on in the game, and mechs enhance every game they're in, that's a fact. Back back. Yeah! As for the levels themselves, well they kind of feel like you're playing through a simplified version of a boomer shooter like Doom or Quake. Only it's in third person, and you're jumping a lot more. 
you explore levels, find secret areas, collect coloured keycards, and shoot pretty much anything you see along the way until the path ahead opens up. Honestly, the gameplay loop here is kind of fun. It feels like an above average licensed shooter, just bogged down by some very bland visual design and a dodgy draw distance. It's a short game coming in at just under two hours, but it doesn't outstay its welcome. It even has a really fun two player mode where you and another player can play as Archer and Chip Hazard and face off in death matches and capture the flag modes. And you wouldn't think much of this mode on first glance, but I spent ages playing this with friends as a kid, so I can personally vouch that this two player mode is low key pretty good. But still, none of the things we've covered so far are what makes Small Soldiers a memorable game for me. As of right now, this game looks like nothing more than an average movie tie-in, and look, that might actually be the case. But we have one more thing to talk about here, something that elevates this entire game and completely changes how it feels to play. But to talk about this, first we need to briefly talk about a man named Michael Giacchino. Michael Giacchino is a composer for television and film. There's a good chance you're familiar with some of his work, even if you aren't familiar with the man himself. Some of his works include the music for Lost, The Incredibles, Up, Ratatouille, Star Trek, Star Wars, Zootopia, Planet of the Apes, Jurassic Park, Spider-Man, and the upcoming Batman movie. Giacchino is an Annie, Grammy, and Oscar winning composer. So long story short, the guy is a pretty big deal. And wouldn't you know it, Giacchino actually got his start making music for video games. Gargoyles for the Sega Mega Drive? Yup, that's the music of an Oscar winning composer right there. The man's most famous video game works are probably the orchestral scores for the Medal of Honor and Call of Duty games. I mean the main theme for the original Medal of Honor especially. So Medal of Honor was developed by DreamWorks Interactive, who regularly collaborated with Giacchino, and since this was DreamWorks, they had Spielberg money. So they could fund orchestral scores for their games, and it really made them stand out at the time. DreamWorks Interactive's first instance of this was the video game adaptation of The Lost World Jurassic Park, which also happens to be one of the first console games to ever feature a fully orchestral soundtrack. And you know what other game was developed by DreamWorks Interactive and featured a fully orchestral Michael Giacchino soundtrack? This one. And I don't want to exaggerate, but the Small Soldier soundtrack completely changes the vibe of this game. There's a reason why when you start this game, you immediately go to the options menu and you crank the music dial up to max. Because it changes the game from this... ...to this. Have you ever played a game where the music is so good that it carries an otherwise average game into being something better than the sum of its parts? Well, Small Soldiers is that game. It's funny to me because this game genuinely has one of the most underappreciated and atmospheric soundtracks on the entire console and it's like, it's just Small Soldiers. They did not need to go so hard on the music for this game, but they did, and not only that, all the music here was created specifically for the game, so every single track here is designed to complement the levels and vibe of the world, and yes, it's a crappy looking PS1 game, but the music just sells me on it. And remember how I mentioned that the game doesn't have any lore, backstory, well, any story at all really, 
Well, don't worry, because it's the music that tells the story, builds the atmosphere, and gets you invested in the game. And I may sound a little crazy, but work with me. I'll, I'll try to explain what I mean. So in Small Soldiers, you have two very distinctive groups, the Gorgonites and the Commando Elite, and the levels take place across both of their worlds. Well, one half of the soundtrack has this very distinct tribal aspect that clearly represents the Gorgonites. Lots of heavy drums, indigenous instruments, throat singing. It feels ancient, almost primal. And then the other half of the soundtrack is very patriotic, militaristic, clearly representing the commando elite. It sounds like something you'd hear in a big budget war movie, very bombastic and powerful. Like the kind of music you'd play if you're proud of bombing other people's countries, I guess. So the game has two very distinct themes which run throughout the game's music that represent the different characters, but the tracks also love to combine these styles together within the same song. It's an interesting clash of the two musical styles, but it works so well, and it's like the clashing of the two musical styles represents the clashing of the two opposing armies. And this is what sells me on the game, because the music tells me the story. It doesn't matter how bland a level could be visually, the music is so good it just instills this mood and atmosphere to the levels, and it genuinely elevates the game because of it. Like for example, we could look at one of the, in my opinion, blandest levels aesthetically in the game, level 5, the Canyon Village. This is the level with probably the most obvious big black draw distance in the game, and on top of that, the level is really basic. It's entirely just bridges and huts over and over again. But then you add the music to the level, See? Now it's good! I could probably go on about the music for an hour at least, but I'll finish this up by showing you my favourite track in the game, which happens to be the music for the game's first level, simply titled Gorgon. Because once again, keep in mind, orchestral music was rare in video games at the time, especially on consoles. So when I as a 7 year old was turning on this game for the first time and the music kicked in, I was like, why is the music making me feel things? So the level starts and it's pretty low key, some chanting, some drums, very atmospheric, almost peaceful in a way. Then as the level goes on, the music just keeps building, more instruments get added, the chanting gets louder, it just builds in intensity as the level goes on. And when you finally think the music has started to peak, they're like, screw it, just go louder. <laughs> so 
So if you're gonna go hard with the music in your game, make sure you do it in the first level, because this had me sold to the point where I'm making a video about it over 20 years later. And to be fair, that's pretty sold. I think it's a testament to the quality of Giacchino's work because even with all of his well-renowned film and TV work in the years since, you can still watch any video on the original Medal of Honor and people are just hyping up how good the soundtrack is non-stop. It's one of those things that struck a chord with people and even though it's an old PS1 game, the music still stands the test of time and is beloved even today. And I feel that the Small Soldier soundtrack strikes the same chord with me, it's just this game's soundtrack is trapped within feckin' Small Soldiers, the video game of all things. So pretty much nobody knows about it. And to be fair, you, you can't really blame the people, I mean... I mean, look at it. Genuinely though, when it comes to Small Soldiers for PS1, what we have is a short game that plays just well enough for you to have some fun with it in spite of its obvious flaws. But when you add the amazing soundtrack to the mix, the game ends up being, well, pretty good actually. Not only does the music elevate the game, but the best way to experience this amazing soundtrack is alongside the game that it was created with. Even today it has the power to transport you into a fantasy world to wage war with the commandos. Even if that world is mostly grey. And sometimes brown. But it also has a cutscene of the commandos killing the DreamWorks moon boy. Commandos, let's open up a big can of whoop ass. That's pretty cool. A plus.